Hey everyone, this is the late adopter, and one of the things I was not a late adopter to was Star Wars. It's been one of my things since childhood, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to discuss Solo, a Star Wars story, and yeah, it was just an okay film, and unfortunately the first, well, outright flop of the, of the movies, as far as I can tell, not sure if that Clone Wars theatrical release lost money, unless the whole season cost over $65 million. Still, there have been many theories as to why it flopped, but one of the most nonsensical is the notion that no one asked for this. And that it seems like it makes sense, but it doesn't really when you think about it. I mean, who doesn't go to see a movie simply because I didn't ask for it, therefore I'm not going to go see it? Now, some would say that that's a figurative statement. We mean something else, and... That can apparently vary between people. Uh, I've noticed a few say, well, this didn't need to be made, which is also a ridiculous notion. No film needs to be made, and some people might say after the fact this did need to be made, and it's more trying to justify why they think it was important. And some people might say, I don't think this film needed to be made, it was, un it was unnecessary. And some might say, no, I thought that film was necessary, I felt it that there was something about it that gave it value, so it's just going to be a subjective argument versus subjective argument, and, and it isn't helpful as to why, objectively, this film didn't make money. And I, whether it's a little literal or figurative, it doesn't take into account because it's not an actual factor. Some might think it is, but the real factor is that people weren't interested in the product as presented. <clears throat> well, there are two really good examples that illustrate the difference. For example, who was asking for Jurassic Park 4? Who was going, I want another Jurassic Park sequel so many years after the third film petered out the franchise? That'd be amazing! Or, or who was saying, we need to make another Jurassic Park film? Oh, well, unless you're part of Universal, then you'd, then you'd still probably not think that film was necessary. You'd just think it would be, maybe could help the, the studio's bottom line. But the thing is that it didn't matter because if people weren't interested in the movie being presented then they weren't going to go see it. Fortunately, what they presented was, hey, what if the park was completed? And then audiences were intrigued. That's what caused them to flock to the movie. They liked what was being presented. Conversely, I think it's safe to say people were asking for a Justice League film. Some were probably thinking, yeah, this needs to be made. Somebody should do a film that does for DC heroes what Avengers did for Marvel. And then we were presented with the film by the guy who made two of the most polarizing superhero films probably ever. And then audiences were thinking, eh, I'm not sure I want to go see that. And unfortunately, that film uh, didn't do well either. So that is the basic difference. But I'm just going to have a little fun. I'm going to illustrate whether it's figurative or literal. This is why no one asked for it doesn't matter because these are a bunch of hit, hit films which I guarantee you no one was asking for beforehand. They just were intrigued by the idea when it was presented, but unless they were high, they were not asking for these films. Okay, man, you know it'd be a really great romantic comedy? Dudley Moore playing a lush. That'd be so awesome. Oh man, Spielberg has to, has to do another alien movie, but unlike Close Encounters, this has to be a metaphor for its daddy issues. That'd be the most, that'd be one of the biggest films of the entire decade. Oh man, why can't Chevy Chase play a dad on a shitty road trip with his family? I so want to see that. You know what? Stripes was awesome, but, but I know exactly w what Bill Murray and Harold Ramis should do next. They should team up with two other guys and make a business where they fight ghosts. Yes, I have run out of cocaine. How did you know? Uh, let's see. You know what? I, I am tired of werewolf movies being about people turning into wolves at the full moon. It needs to be about small furry critters turning into reptilians if you feed them after midnight. That'd be the best werewolf movie ever. Pseudo werewolf movie. But you know what? I'm tired of werewolf movies being the conventional way. It has to be done this way. I so want that to happen. Oh, man. I always wanted to see Alex P. Keaton make out with his mom. But what if he traveled back in time just so they were the same age? It'd be the biggest hit of the year. Oh, you know, you know what will get Harrison Ford is for his actual Oscar nomination? If he was an Amish country, that'd be incredible. Oh. 
why don't we have more films about kids hanging out in detention? John Hughes, we need you to do this! And you know what? Search for Spock was okay, but you know what really helped the films? If they used a Save the Whales plot to travel back to present-day Earth. Oh, that'd be, man. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. It has to be done. Why aren't they doing it? And, and why aren't they doing The Fly with more gore and existential questions? Why aren't they doing that? And how come there isn't a film about a guy who builds a sports stadium just because he hears voices in his head? Why isn't there that? <sighs> oh, oh, by the way, I just figured out who would make a great action star. The guy from Moonlighting. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Oh, but, but you know what even top that? If a Las Vegas singer went undercover as a nun, please make that happen. Please! <laughs> Oh, oh, and please, Robin Williams, please play a dad who has to disguise himself as an elderly Scottish window. It's the it's the role you were born to play. Oh, and why can't we see a grumpy weatherman caught in a time loop? That'd be one of the greatest scripts of all time. And I'm telling you, movies about virtual reality can be successful. I know we've got so many flops in the past, like Hackers and Johnny Mnemonic, but... Keanu Reeves can do a successful VR movie. You just have to cut up, do less hacking, and more kung fu. Come on, isn't that obvious? And I, I know Robin Crusoe is a literary classic, but we need to update it. We need to swap out Friday with a volleyball. And I could go on, but th this last one is the absolute most pertinent to, to Solo, a Star Wars story. Who in the mid-70s was going, gee... The guy who did American Graffiti got turned down to do a Flash Gordon movie? Well, he should do his own Flash Gordon movie. He should do his own space adventure film with neither the, with neither the Blackjack nor the Hookers. That'd be the, the most greatest, most influential film of all time. See why that's kind of silly. You don't have to ask for a film. You just have to make it good enough for people to flock to the theater and work for word of mouth not to drive them away. But it doesn't matter what they think beforehand. People don't have to ask for a product beforehand if they don't know how it's good it's going to be beforehand. You can't expect the audience to be psychic. You just have to expect the audience to hopefully like what you're presenting.